Oh, hi to my YouTube subscribers. This video continues the description of my stay in a village in Surin. If you haven't seen part one, I suggest you take a look at that first. On the morning of the day after my arrival, I woke up early in order to join Wee and her sister going to market. Wee supplements her farm income by selling what she calls meatballs to travelers passing along main road not far from her home. Meatballs is actually a variety of meats, poultry, and fish that she cooks in hot oil and serves with sauces. If you've been to Thailand, I'm sure you've seen stands that sell these meatballs. By the end of the day, she's usually sold out. She also sells shaved ice, which uh, I really like. Great on a hot day, which is almost every day. So Wee gets up at six and her sister drives a motorbike that's outfitted with a sidecar that seats two and also carries goods. It's about a 15 minute ride to town where we and her sister pick out the meats that they'll sell. She got a lot of food for about $30. Now the stand that we sells from is in front of a general store that's operated by another relative. We and her sister spend quite a bit of time first skewering the meatballs and putting them into a glass display case with ice. Customers pick out the skewers they want and we cooks them. As you can see, there's a lot of work that goes into setting up the stand. In addition to the food itself, all the sauces have to be put out, as well as plastic bags, napkins, and a bunch of other things. People also call in orders and we or her sister will deliver. Now, as I said, this business supplements the farm income. We just harvested a sugarcane crop and she's planting cassava, from which tapioca flour is made. Now, I'm no help at all selling meatballs, although it's possible that some people stopped at the stand to get a good look at the foreigner. I spent most of the day working on my tie. Everybody's been helping me. My vocabulary has been growing slowly, but I've been particularly enjoying learning to read. I think the children especially like to listen to the foreigner reading at a first grade level. Now, I'm a vegetarian, and it turns out that Wee's mom is also a vegetarian, so I had some great meals during my stay. Now, when all the food is sold out in the early evening, everybody heads back to the house. Now, there's a wide porch that surrounds two sides of the house with several hammocks for relaxing. And after dinner, that's what we did, relax in the hammocks, talk, have a beer. The emphasis in farm life is really function over form inside and out. The house has everything that's needed for living. Nothing fancy and everything practical. There are photographs on the walls and many mementos on shelves, Buddhas, and not a lot of private spaces. We built a bedroom for herself, but houses generally have an open floor plan. Village life is not for people who like a lot of alone time. I found the same thing when I stayed in villages in China. Privacy is very much a Western concept. Yeah. I don't yeah. want to overgeneralize, but I'm struck by uh, how different the model of life is in a village. It's a very social life that revolves around personal interaction. There are no strong boundaries between households. Visiting is very fluid and people love to talk. For me, this is a contrast to city life in the U.S., where personal space is regarded as important, where people care about interior decoration, and social interaction happens at prescribed times. Anyway, I had a fascinating glimpse of life in a village and plan to return, especially when my tie is a bit stronger. So thanks very much to we and her family for hosting me in their home and in the village. If you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing and please consider buying a copy of my book, The Vientiane Affair. Order information is available in the description.